out today is the X-Tool D1 Laser Engraver. This was sent to me for a review and we're going to check it out. We even got a rotary attachment for this one where we can turn round objects and engrave on them. This is going to be a pretty cool addition to the maker space and we're going to give it a go right next to the K40 CO2 laser. This is a diode laser. They are different. They have different use cases, but I think the two are going to complement each other well. Normally I don't make much of a deal of packaging because, well, normally it doesn't matter that much, but on larger dollar items, it matters. You want your components and your new shiny equipment to come in one piece and this thing is just packaged incredibly well there's no damage everything's got several centimeters of foam between it and the case and it was really well thought out and laser cut by the looks of it just two thumbs up instruction book is incredibly lengthy multiple languages nice color pictures at a glance Looks like a winner. Comes with a bag of accessories, some zip ties, probably for cable management, the screws to put it together, uh, coupling, maybe a spare, and we'll check out the instructions and get this thing out and get it assembled. As for what you get in the box, here it is. Everything that can be put together seems to be put together. It's quite modular and the packing was just perfect. This is one heck of a heavy duty unit. This, these side rails are really, really, really tough. So I think this thing is gonna be pretty easy to put together and pretty robust when we're done. The laser itself is completely modular and all assembled, all in the heat sinks, which is kind of critical, I think. And the cool part about this, check the way they aim this thing, the way you get your distance right. This cool little can opener looking device, that's your spacing to your work. Really cool, really slick idea, really, really robust. So I, I'm excited. Everything we need to assemble it, all the Allen keys, all the hardware, and an, even an SD card to get us started, as well as some materials to get us started as well. I can't fault anything. This is a nice touch. SD card costs nothing these days. Put it in your kit's manufacturer. Give the end user everything they need to get started right away. It all looks like it's here. When you're installing the screws around the outside of the X-Tool, make sure that you leave them all loose until they're all installed and then go around and tighten them up. That way you can get them into the holes and not cross thread them. Also a good idea to remove the antenna from the bottom of the unit. That way you don't break it off when you're assembling this. It is a little heavy. And freshly assembled. The assembly took no time at all. It's painless. Way easier than a 3D printer and this material is so easy to work with. It's big, it's heavy, nice and easy to line up because of it slotting in. It just works good. The bads. This cable management, this took me the longest of anything, was looking this up and going online and double checking that this is actually how this is intended. Uh, at this price point, I don't think this is acceptable. I think there should be a drag chain and something better than this. But the top side is fine. There's no need for anything there. It's perfect, but uh, there should be a drag chain here. One more thing, I don't think this is acceptable either. The Wi-Fi antenna comes out of the controller through with its long little coax here through to the PCB. But this could easily run over here and be routed out the side. It'd have a little bit of attenuation of the RF from the frame, but it'd be completely protected from getting hit on the bottom like it is here. It'd be a far better location and it would still clear the belts. 
This thing looks pretty cool. Smooth, everything works. The belts were easy to tension. The tensioning is actually really clever. They've just got a single machine screw M3 or M4 down through um, both ends. You'll see in the time lapse, I actually had to flip this gantry because I had it in wrong and the dead giveaway was actually the tensioning hole. So yeah, pretty cool. Overall, all is well. Uh, shouldn't roll this back and forth too much because the steppers are generating a back voltage through the control board. So be cognizant of that. This is not good. This is a USB connection and I can see this thing in device manager and nope, no go. This is USB, not good. So it turns out their website has LaserBox Basic and LaserBox Windows. Basic is the one you want, not Windows. Windows doesn't work. It recognized that it needed a firmware update on the machine, took action right away. Cool, thumbs up, thumbs down. This time with the switch in the upload position on the machine. Thumbs up, maybe? Thumbs up. And sure enough, my very first super cool Wi-Fi connection, no problem. Way too stinky for in the house, but uh, it's working, even by Wi-Fi. My good friend was nice enough to cut me a piece of plywood we can use for a base for this, and we'll get it out into the shop where it's a little bit safer to run. Welcome to the garage workshop. This is where we've got the X-Tool D1 set up right next to my K40. This is my 40 watt CO2 laser cutter. So you can see I'm no stranger to laser cutting. My little wall of goodies. Here's all my materials that I use in laser cutting and my material storage. Pretty handy stuff. We've got some other fab here and we've got a 3018 CNC. So we can do a lot of stuff here in the garage. We should be able to try this thing out. X-Tool was kind enough to send me some material to play with. This is a really cool little box that they have available. They have feeds and speeds for all of the different materials they include in it, which is great for anybody new to these lasers. And I am new to a diode laser, so I'll for sure use some of their settings. They come with some anodized aluminum business cards. These are super cool. I already have a video on this. These make amazing business cards. You want to really stand out in the crowd, maybe uh, now that we go back to actually using business cards again. And some plywood, which I have a boatload of. Uh, FYI, Dollar Store is just awesome for all kinds of wooden coasters and different boxes and cool stuff to engrave. Uh, more for the CO2 laser, little jewelry boxes, all kinds of neat things that you can engrave. Plaques. Here's a really cool plaque you can get at a dollar store all ready to go. When you have an occasion come up that you need a cool plaque, well, now you're all set with your laser cutter. I repeated the setup of the laser box software and then I went to framing. And I just framed this out. This is going to be a star pattern. 
I love this framing function. I wish my K40 Whisperer had that, but it doesn't. So we know we're gonna be on this piece of plywood. Uh, I have no idea of my feeds and speeds, 50 and 20, but we haven't set our distance yet. One of the coolest features of this laser is our distance setting device. Put that down and then there's a thumb wheel here and you just lower the laser down onto the work. Then you tighten the thumb wheel and then you just flip this back up out of the way. And we know we're precisely distanced for our design, which is super cool. We know the laser is gonna be in perfect focus. Run our framing again. Make sure that we're still correctly framed, and we are. We should be able to just hit start on this and send our little star down to our plywood. That's it. It is just that quick and simple to get started with this laser. Um, I knew this when I accepted it for review that this was going to be pretty awesome for simple designs and simple jobs. and. Look at how sharp that is, how fine a point that is. That's pretty impressive. Uh, awesome. Okay, next up we want an alignment pattern on here, some grid to work with, because this is a pretty big laser. I'll put the link down below to my GitHub where I put all my reference materials and sources I found them. This is from an awesome YouTube video in Thingiverse where he posted this cool alignment grid. I do what I always do. I start a GitHub and share everything. There's a huge repo on all my uh, cool CO2 laser stuff. I'm gonna do the same for this. We've got it queued up correctly in the center we just hit start. Okay, just like that, we have our alignment grid done. Turned out pretty awesome. Uh, super, super good, actually. I referenced it from the top corner, even though they've removed the home button from the software, I guess they don't wanna have people ramming it into the corner. I don't think there's any limit switches. I just referenced it by pushing it up into the corner, down 203 and then over 216. And that'll be the center. This is now a mark of the workable area. So here is the a good idea of the workable area. A little bit more than that because the author of this file left a little bit of buffer. But you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the actual frame. You have to make do with having the space for the gantry. That's just the way it works. This is pretty much done. During this cut, uh, that did fill the room right full of smoke. I tried to capture it with the video as best I could, but for a tiny little engrave, uh, it kicked out a pile of smoke. So I don't understand why people are running these without ventilation and running them in their house. That's just crazy to me. You'll see, I've already planned for this. Up here is some handy materials that we're going to use to cut off of that duct work and make ourselves a cool little duct for this with a fan. One heavy duty duct fan to be precise. So that will do the job that should evacuate the fumes away from here. We'll be able to mount this somewhere. I'm not sure just yet. Uh, again, all files in my Git repo. We'll do a dedicated video to that. And this deserves its own video. This is our roller attachment. And you can see I'm ready for this right here. These water bottles are going to be perfect to engrave on. Uh, really, really cool. This thing can actually engrave stainless and engrave the paint off of stainless, so it should be just perfect. Okay. 
is pretty handy for engraving on stainless steel. A lot easier than the K40. Look at that. Just awesome. Couldn't be happier. That just works so awesome. You dial in the exact amount and hit go. Put the dot in the center of your model, of your design, and it's centered every time. It just works. I love it. That that was worth the price of admission right there. That's my getting started video with this laser cutter. You're going to see it much more on the channel. If you want to see the fan retrofit and all other use cases, subscribe. Yeah, check me out later on. Uh, these videos keep trickling through as we use it for projects. Same with all the other tooling in the shop. We just use them as they come up. But this, I think I'll get some dedicated videos. Before I sign off, the negatives are no forced air assist by default. That is a requirement on a laser cutter. There's no way that you can cut with this thing without a air assist. It's just silly. It's just going to burn and carry on. That should be, should be factory. You shouldn't have to buy it separate. And if you're going to cut with this, it needs to have the honeycomb base. You need to have something to get your work up off of. Well, they give you nothing but it needs to have that honeycomb base from factory just silly that it doesn't have that and they advertise for cutting it's a good way to light a fire without it uh, one last thing this wiring uh was not a problem it's fine it's it's staying out of the way but you should have some cable management for that but that's all i've got to say that's the negatives the positives the build quality like i raved about this thing is great it's smooth as glass it's going to be great so let's let's get it to work here and uh i'll post a follow-up once we have some time under it cheers guys